Question 6b. An experimental rocket is at a height of 5,000 meters, ascending with a velocity of 200 times the square root of 2 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal when its engine stops. After this time, the equations of motion of the rocket are x equals 200t and y equals negative 4.9t squared plus 200t plus 5,000, where t is measured in seconds after the engine stops. Do not show this. Part 1. What is the maximum height the rocket will reach and when will it reach this height? The following are the marking guidelines for question 6b, part 1. For one mark, we have correct height or time, and for two marks, we have correct solution. The maximum height is reached when the velocity in the vertical direction, y dot, equals zero. Now y is equal to negative 4.9t squared plus 200t plus 5000. That's the displacement in the vertical direction. Differentiating this, we get the equation for velocity in the vertical direction. So y dot is equal to negative 9.8t plus 200. Solving y dot equals zero, that is negative 9.8t plus 200 equals zero, we get t is equal to 200 over 9.8, which is approximately 20.408. To find the height, we substitute this value, 200 over 9.8, into the equation for vertical displacement. So y of 200 over 9.8 is equal to negative 4.9 times 200 over 9.8 squared plus 200 times 200 over 9.8 plus 5,000, and that equals 7,040.816 and so on. So the rocket will reach a maximum height of 7,040.82 meters at time t equals 20.41 seconds after the engine stops correct to two decimal places. Now there is an alternative solution the maximum height is the vertex of the concave down parabola of y equals negative 4.9t squared plus 200t plus 5000. Now the time to maximum height is found by t equals negative b on 2a, so that is negative 200 over 2 times negative 4.9, and that equals 200 over 9.8 or approximately 20.41. The maximum height is found by substituting 200 over 9.8 into the equation for the vertical displacement and again, we obtain 7,040.816. So whichever solution, whether we use this solution involving calculus or the solution involving the properties of a parabola, we end up with the same result. Part two, the pilot can only operate the ejection seat when the rocket is descending at an angle between 45 degrees and 60 degrees to the horizontal. What are the earliest and latest times that the pilot can operate the ejection seat? The following are the marking guidelines for question 6b, part 2. For one mark, we have finds the earliest time or equivalent merit. For two marks, we have correctly calculates the latest time or equivalent merit. And for three marks, we have correct solution. The question makes reference to the angle of descent with respect to the horizontal, which means we need dy dx. Now we have two equations of motion that are expressed parametrically in terms of t. So we have x in terms of t and y in terms of t. So we need to eliminate the t and then come up with the Cartesian equation that relates y with x. So we're going to find the Cartesian equation of the trajectory. Starting off with x is equal to 200t, we're going to make t the subject. So t is equal to x over 200, we'll call that equation number 1. Now we have y is equal to negative 4.9t squared plus 200t plus 5000. So we're going to eliminate the t by substituting it out, and in its place we're going to substitute in x over 200. So we have y is equal to negative 4.9 times x over 200 squared plus 200 times x over 200, and that's convenient because the 200s will cancel, plus 5000. Expanding the brackets, we have y is equal to negative 49 over 400,000 times x squared plus x plus 5,000. Now the angle to the positive horizontal or the positive x-axis is equivalent to dy dx. And dy dx in this case, so differentiating this equation here, 
we have dy dx is equal to negative 49 over 200,000 times x plus 1. And we'll call that equation number 2. Now, descending at an angle of 45 degrees, that's 45 degrees to the negative horizontal or the negative x-axis is equivalent to 135 degrees to the positive x-axis. So tan 135 degrees is equal to negative 1. So in other words, 135 degrees is equivalent to the gradient of negative 1. And tan 120 degrees, that's the angle to the positive x-axis, is equivalent to 60 degrees, which is the angle of descent or the angle to the negative x-axis, and that's equal to negative square root of 3. So solving dy dx is equal to negative 1, so from equation number 2, we have negative 1 is equal to negative 49 over 200,000 times x plus 1. Solving for x, we get x is equal to 400,000 over 49. Now when x is equal to 400,000 over 49, from equation number 1, so we'll go back to equation number 1 here, that's t is equal to x over 200, we're going to substitute the value for x we just found into this equation to find the value of t at which that occurs. And we get approximately 40.82 seconds. Now solving dy dx is equal to negative square root of 3, we get negative square root of 3 is equal to negative 49 over 200,000 times x plus 1. Solving for x, we get negative 1 minus the square root of 3 is equal to negative 49 divided by 200,000 times x. Making x a subject, we get x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 3 in brackets divided by 49 divided by 200,000. And from equation number 1, we get t is equal to x over 200, substituting in the value of x we just found, we get t is equal to 55.76 seconds, correct to two decimal places. Therefore, the earliest and latest times to operate the ejection seat is 40.82 seconds and 55.76 seconds, correct to two decimal places. Part 3. For the parachute to open safely, the pilot must eject when the speed of the rocket is no more than 350 metres per second. What is the latest time at which the pilot can eject safely? The following are the marking guidelines for question 6b, part 3. For one mark, we have recognises that v squared is equal to x dot squared plus y dot squared, or equivalent merit, and for two marks, we have correct solution. The velocity of the rocket at any point in time is given by the magnitude of the velocity vector v, and that's equal to the magnitude of the vector sum of the horizontal velocity vector plus the vertical velocity vector. So that's the x dot plus y dot. That vector sum, we're going to take the magnitude of that, and that gives us the velocity of the rocket. Now, the vector x dot is equal to the first derivative with respect to t of 200t, and that equals 200 times the vector i. And remember that the vector i represents motion in the horizontal direction. And the vector y dot is equal to the first derivative with respect to t of negative 4.9t squared plus 200t plus 5,000. So that's the displacement in the vertical direction. Differentiate that to get velocity. And we get the vector y dot is equal to negative 9.8t plus 200 in brackets times the vector j, which represents motion in the vertical direction. Now the magnitude of vector v, so that's our velocity vector, is equal to the square root of the magnitude of x dot squared plus the magnitude of y dot squared. Since x dot and y dot are 90 degrees to each other, in a right angle triangle, and the vector v is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So Pythagoras theorem is applied here. Now the velocity of v can be no more than 350 meters per second. So we're going to solve the equation. 350 is equal to the square root of 200 squared plus negative 9.8t plus 200 squared. And we're going to take the square root of that. So 
Squaring both sides of this equation to eliminate the third, we have 122,500 is equal to 200 squared plus 96.04t squared minus 3,920t plus 200 squared. Now subtracting two lots of 200 squares from both sides of this equation, we have 42,500 is equal to 96.04t squared minus 3,920t. Forming a quadratic equation by moving all terms over to one side, we get 96.04t squared minus 3,920t minus 42,500 equals zero. And solving for t by applying the quadratic formula, we get t is equal to negative 8.90 or 49.72, correct to two decimal places. But time t needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, the latest time that the pilot can eject safely is 49.72 seconds, which is the smaller of 49.72 seconds and 55.76 seconds found in part two. The following is the feedback from the Marking Centre for question 6b. For part one, the majority of candidates were successful, evaluating t when y dot equals zero and then substituting the resulting value for t into the equation for y. Use of parametric equations was more effective, as the use of Cartesian equations or time of flight and maximum height results involved more working and caused problems for some. For part two, some candidates realized that the earliest time occurred when t was twice the answer to b part one, while very few showed an understanding that the gradient of the projectile after reaching the highest point was negative. Candidates using Cartesian equations often had difficulty correctly evaluating both values for t due to algebraic or arithmetic errors. For part three, candidates who attempted this part of the question generally used Pythagoras theorem but struggled to solve the ensuing equation correctly.